starting. Okay. So welcome everyone to our diversity and inclusion work group meeting. Oh, hey, Nicole. Oh, hey, Nicole. Just, Nicole. just in time. We were just starting the agenda. <laughs> I think Matt seems to be having problems. I keep seeing one Matt and then two Matts. Yep. And I don't hear Nicole yet either. Yeah. Okay. But Nicole is typing in the document, so that's. that's <laughs> oh no, that was me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. On the hand of Nicole. I only see anonymous animals. Yeah, that's me in this case. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Daniel, the first item on the agenda is yours. Or related to you. I think I actually wrote it down. <laughs> oh, you mean in terms of um, the, 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 the proposals to force them? Or, yeah, yeah, finalizing the, the Python dev room. Why? Yeah, what, what they did send, that they didn't do last week, was to send a tutorial. So the tutorial was sent to ChaosCon. That's something. Cool. Um, so initially, uh, you, Don, and me, we are the ones there. Uh, if there's someone else, I can easily, we can easily join mm -hmm. at, at them later. And then regarding to the Python dev room, I don't know, you were not that... Uh, in the mood for having this, <laughs> so I, I, I didn't say I didn't send anything at the very end, but I don't know if we are still in time. So. Oh, okay. No, I thought we should submit it because I think it would be a great talk. I just mm. don't want to. I don't want to overcommit myself mm. because with helping with helping organize ChaosCon and submitting proposals to ChaosCon and then submitting proposals to the community dev room, it just seemed like mm. it seemed like a lot. But I. I definitely want you to submit it if it's not too late. You can no, you can put so me as a this is the, 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 I was checking. You can put me as a co-presenter if you want. I just uh, okay. thought maybe uh, Emma might be a better choice now that she's joined. <laughs> <laughs> so we have time with the first of December. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we are still there. Okay. Hi, Emma. <laughs> Hello. We're a few minutes late. No, no worries. We're just talking about the FOSDEM proposals. I, I did submit the one to the community dev room, the panel. I also submitted one of my own on um, coming up with a metric strategy. So not not a DNI talk at all, but just like in general, matching your metrics up to your up to your strategy. So I submitted, I submitted both of those. Um, and then we were just talking about Daniel's uh, proposal for the. Python dev room and we were trying to remember did you did you want him to submit that with you as the co-presenter? Um no, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> All right, just just I submit it with I, again I don't like make it, I can help at the time if you want me to, but I don't know that I'll have time to contribute towards it, so I don't want to like the, the thing. Well I think the talk's already written, is that right, Daniel? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Basically you just need to I mean, I can. I'd love to, but I, I yeah, I didn't know those materials are guys. Hmm. Okay, so let me uh, let me think, and, I, and then I will read you by by email. So okay, why don't you send why don't you send both of us the materials, and just maybe we can just do a little um, a little sync up on what you have, and which of us would be better to to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, we, yeah, okay, that's great. Because if Emma doesn't want to do it, I'm happy to do it. Um, I'm just... Uh, no, I can't. I was just trying not to let anyone down. <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel like, you know, I, I'd be happy to. So, I, and Dawn, sounds like you could have a lot to do that talk on lighting up strategy with, uh, or metric with strategy sounds awesome and timely, I think, for a lot of it. Yeah, so we'll see if it gets accepted. Um, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, because I've given a talk on that before, but it's been it's been a long time, and that was a component of a talk that I just did at an open source strategy forum a couple of weeks ago. So I thought that now would be a good time to maybe 
revitalize that one a bit. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I added this to our notes that Daniel will submit the talk with Don as the co-presenter. Well, I think Dan, here, I'll, I'll rewrite that. Daniel. Um, and then I'm going to submit the chaos con talk right after this meeting. So, um, so I'll submit the, uh, what was it? The panel to chaos con. And then I, I, I just submitted the, the tutorial in the 10 awesome. minutes ago. Thank you. So, well, So I think talk-wise uh, and session-wise, we are doing quite well. Mm -hmm. Well, we're certainly submitting a lot of stuff. Let's, let's hope we do as well when it comes to the approvals. I always look at it as a numbers game. The more you <laughs> submit, the more you get accepted. I agree with that. Okay, shall we move on to the next item? Mm -hmm. Emma uh, created a new issue, which I just now pulled up. And whether we talk about her issue, oh, it has a nice issue number. A one, two, three. <laughs> so discussing the uh, objectives has the same outcome as discussing the open canvas. And I think the objectives are more important than the canvas because the canvas is just a nice overview of what we have. So I would adjust that once we decide what our objectives are. Yeah, I was just I hoping to... you... Sorry, someone spoke. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go for it, Emma. Oh, no, I think I was interrupting you. So, um, so yeah. So what I did here, and I don't, I don't know what's useful for now. I, I, um, the way, the way that I broke this out just is kind of how I start building objectives and and cares. I don't know how you all would. And the first is like the problem statement, and and you know a lot of this is like for me talking about like the work how I arrived here. So it might not be quite right for the group, and I'm not sure how to other than to present you with like what I'm thinking and have you kind of propose nations, whatever, I couldn't think of another way to do it. Um, and so that was that open source has less diversity in tech overall. And there's no standard or best practices for measuring the success of our interventions. So basically like, even if we do things, we don't know, uh, we might have an idea short term, like we'll be like, oh, like six women join the project, but long term we stop tracking again. And so there's never that attraction. That's, that's my, sorry, that's my like, footnote without additional standards and guidance for data metrics and ethics um FOSS projects also risk harm to the people they're trying to help so that was um i don't know if that's the right problem statement or there's two but um and then the opportunity with chaos which i won't read to you what the goal might be and i wrote out some of the risks as i see them and then tried to work them into the objectives now just to be clear i think then like um, under objective one, Georg, you started to be like, who are those? So things like 10 open source projects, like those are just numbers I pulled out of the air, but uh, OKRs are supposed to be like ambitious, right? So um, <clears throat> that's where some of those numbers came from. I think before you get to the, like, the, who those 10 partners might be, like that's where the KRs come in. And I didn't write any KRs out yet. So I wanted to get people's feedback first, like, 
if the group agrees that's the right objective, then you start writing the care, which like, for example, might be, you know, we have uh, an agreed set of criteria. What are KRs? Um, key results, sorry. Thank you. We have an agreed set of criteria for partnership, right? Like that would come before you ever reached out to anyone or part. So what I, so that would be the, the second step. I'm just giving an example. And then the second key result might be, you know, we have reached out to X projects. Um, you know, maybe even like the first key result is, and these are all number two. Um, we set goals for the types for so this might be like the open source architects, if you remember, like you might want to have a small project that might be like, you know, someone massive like Microsoft, and then, you know, like just having criteria, then you would agree on the set of criteria for that partnership and then you would reach out to them and then, you know, that would all kind of make the objective successful. So it's like the steps that you would take to make the objective happen. So you wouldn't just jump to like, who are those partners going to be You'd like by the time you you could answer that question at the end of those key results, which would be like based on like who you want to work with based on the criteria for who they have to be. Maybe it's like that they have to commit to some sort of ethics thing and that you've reached out and that sort of thing. So that's how I'm building these. And I have to actually leave four or five minutes to drive my kids down the hill because there's a bear in the backyard. So I hope that's a good excuse. I will oh be my back. God. It, it just <laughs> happened in the, in the edge of the, so I will be back. All right, do your thing. We'll see you in a few. Yep. And just ask like what, how to move forward with these. Okay, be right back. <laughs> oh my God, best excuse for leaving a meeting ever. Seriously. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh. <sighs> that's, that's pretty hilarious. Yeah, I've only ever seen live bears in zoos, so. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so I'm going to resolve all of my comments so that we have a clean document. Oh, wait, I can't because I don't have permission. Never mind. I can mark them as resolved on the goals doc. Yeah. Are you logged in? Or are you one of the anonymous? I bet you're one of the anonymous animals. Well, I am logged in, but I don't know which account has permission to edit. <laughs> nope. Neither of my accounts has a permission Weird. to edit. Because I just, I just resolved one of your plus ones just to. Oh, yeah. And I cannot even ask for permission either. I think you think you're logged in, um, but you're not. I think that Google doesn't think you're logged in. I have had this happen before where I've been sure that I was logged in because I know I've been using that account on like email in that same browser. And for whatever reason, Google Docs on some of these just doesn't recognize that I'm logged in. Yeah, well, it gives me the option to sign out of the account within the Google Docs, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'm logged in. Yeah, but I don't see you edit. I don't see you in the doc. No, that's fair. Yeah, I only see Emma and then I see four anonymous animals. So apparently I'm not logged in either. Because it says anyone with the link can comment. Okay. And yeah, I don't which know. I don't actually have access either. I mean, like looking at the who it's shared with. I don't know. I'm one of those anon anonymous animals. <laughs> <laughs> I just signed out and signed back in. It's still the same result. Yeah, yeah like it me. still shows uh, four anonymous animals plus Emma. Two of them is me. <laughs> and to be fair, one of them might be me because I'm not entirely sure how I'm. Okay, anyway. If 
if you click on something to comment, like if you highlight a word and then click comment, does it show your name? No, I don't think so. Mm. Well, it shows my name in the comment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, same for me. Weird. Hmm. Mm, I, I have a comment in the in the meantime. So the next item in the agenda is resource pages that Daniel had worked on, which on an emerging. Um, so I was I was asking myself. I don't remember this. So do you remember about this? Yeah. If you go to the issues, you had worked on a few, but the issues we never closed them. That was um, because we focused mm -hmm. on the ones that Don did way back two months ago. Oh, okay. So that's, oh, the ones, that's you did, the ones you did before the tutorial, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. and they have ready for review on them in the issue tracker. And so I was just putting it on our agenda to go through them. And if they are done, move them into the repository. Yeah, so uh, 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 I, was, I was thinking that, uh, and I had it to, to the very end of the agenda, this will be a, a, well, go through issues on GitHub, someone added this, but I added the, the last part of, and summary of last actions. I, I, I've been in several trips for the last weeks, so it would be great to, I was wondering if it makes sense to you to have some kind of small summary, like, hey, I, we've been working in, in these topics uh, during the last week. So we are all aware of the advances because basically I know that there have been some discussions on pull requests or issues, but I'm not really aware of what they were talking about. So perhaps the owners or the authors of those specific issues yep. or pull requests would be good to have, but at least to, to say, hey, we've been doing this. And so I'm aware of that. There has not been much activity since we got back. Um, last couple of weeks, we <laughs> had very low attendance on some calls. And so the most mm -hmm. activity was on the session proposals. The other major thing on terms of issues is that I created more issues for developing resource pages for the pages that we are still missing. So they're all now represented inside of the issue tracker. And there's a Google talk for each of those. Oh, here, uh, I was just going through the issues 108. Daniel, that is a proposal DNI tutorial for ChaosCon. And you submitted that, right? So I can close it. Yep, thank you. Okay. Perfect. One less issue in our issue list. What are we going to do about um, those ideas that I post, like issue 101? No. Issue seven four maintainability clean and clear code, or issue sixty seven vegetable test, where I just dropped in ideas for metrics and we had a conversation on them, but it's really counterintuitive to leave it open until we decide to do something because once we close it, it's like out of sight, out of mind. But some of those ideas, I don't think we are ready to actually incorporate as a metric yet. So that's a question for you all. 
And Emma is back. Hey. So we can defer my question if you like. What was your question? Sorry. In the issue tracker, I sometimes posted ideas for new metrics like the maintainability clean and clear code or the Bechdel test. And I just wanted to know if we should leave those issues open or close them because there's no discussion going on. Um, keeping a clear issue tracker and not losing ideas, that's the balance. Mm. I wanted to see what our thoughts are. Mm. I, I would say that um, having open issues is, is not a big deal. So basically, if you, you are the owner of one of those, one of the things you, you have to do is exactly this. So, hey, I opened this, so what do you think? Um, then perhaps what we can work on is to produce uh, kind of a procedure to say, hey, there is a new metric or, or metric proposal that is trying to, to solve this problem. It's on the table. So you, let's say if we all agree or there's some discussion, then we can say this seems to be uh, related to governance, for instance. So we go there and open this there, and then perhaps we ask for more feedback in this case. So let's say that you are interested in, in understanding a bit more about the metric A, and we say, hey, we believe that this is part of the governance thing, so we move everything to, to the metric, to the uh, well focus area, question metric approach and say, uh, it should be there. So then we open some discussion with you perhaps and say, so how, how well, basically to, we kindly ask you to fill uh, one of, of our templates and then we, we help you with the process. Does it make sense? Okay, so leave it as is yeah. until someone decides to fill out the template. Okay. I wonder if there's some sort of labeling or best practices um, for managing that type of task. Mm. That's a good idea. I can create a label metric idea. Yeah, exactly. Mm. At least it threads them together too. Good idea, I like that. Okay. Thank you. We can resume your uh, the conversation about the goals then. Sure. Um, and I had a chance to think then, <laughs> what, what am I asking of the group? I think maybe um, with the remaining time, like before the holidays, um, I can maybe time box some discussions, like instead of like taking up like a the whole half hour or more, maybe I can just uh, in this call kind of like agree on or get some alignment questions, concerns on what I've identified as a problem statement, opportunity, goal, and risks, and then ask that if you have time to review the uh, objectives one and two, you do during the week. Um, but then next week I'll do objectives one and two. We'll talk through those um, three and four, and then somehow leave room for objectives that I've missed, which you might want to propose. Would that kind of be a good way forward? And I can time box it to 10 minutes here just to. I think that sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> so, so our role then would be to review well, I'll, the ideas I'll, that you have or? Well, what I'm trying to do is drive this as a set of goals for 2019, right? Yeah. Um, so that, um, you know, January 2019, you're like, oh, I'm just so ready to start the year. And like, oh, what are our goals? Oh, look, we have all our goals outlined for the year, at least like what we think they are now, they might change. And we have some like, for each of those goals, we've identified the steps we need to take. So do we just need to open some issues like and work on them? And, you know, there's kind of that. And then also, so that's like the, the process piece, but then it's also like, if something else comes up during the year um, or, during any quarter and you and somebody wants to work on it, you can say, well, what, how does this align with our current goals? So it also helps, helps um, keep you from straying too far or working on things that are like many layers away um, from the goal you're trying to make. Like it sort of is a, a way to focus as well. So that's, that's what I proposed I do with kind of like the time, that, I mean, not that I'm forever going away, but I won't be on these calls anymore. So this is, 
uh, something I thought I could contribute, having thought a lot about this. It's the reason that, like, you know, I pushed for a working group in chaos. Like, like this is this is just basically me trying to write it down so that, uh, yeah. So I think that's what I hope to do. And then in this call, I want to just take like small pieces of of what I have here and like ask for your verbal feedback. And then during the week, if you have time, like do asynchronous like suggestions. And and I'm not married to this. Like if you're like this is the wrong problem statement. I think that the, this objective is totally wrong or it's missing this, like that's exactly what I'm trying to do is drive that consensus. Okay. Um, and then I'm just, <clears throat> as, a, as a process, I'm just saying, I'll try and break up the, the verbal feedback pieces to do like, you know, a chunk of this document each week until like the holidays come. And then hopefully it's, you know, at least 90% ready for January. But it depends how aligned we are. I don't know that yet. I certainly appreciate the idea of having broken out steps that we want to follow. I think that's a really good idea to do that. And I'm okay with the approach of doing this asynchronously over the week and then driving consensus during the calls. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean I think I think this is great because it feels like um it feels like it gives us a little more of a sense of purpose. For, for the working group and maybe it will help us better better describe what we what we do to people. I think I think it's gonna be good. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that too. Um, and I I really, really like the the whole notion of having, you know, in twenty nineteen, here is what we hope to accomplish. Right. And 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 to have some real some some focused areas where we're working and, and moving things forward. Um, one of the things that Danielle and I talked about in Berlin at OpenStack Summit was, you know, something that would be tangible um, or consumable, right? So, yeah, I, I really like that, that, um, that, that idea of, of essentially building our objectives for, 2019. I'm good. I'm glad this feels useful. That's really what I was hoping to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then, you know, maybe I can send along. We use the objective the, the, it's called OKR. KR. This is the way that we build our goals in our Mozilla team, our open innovation team. So it's also like I'm completely comfortable with it, but if others have other ways than that. Um, and, you know, it's just to talk about that high, like, the vision and then the, the key results of like reaching that that objective so um and objective one i sort of built out a little bit how it would be but i i won't build out the key results for the objectives until i've got more feedback from all of you is is part of that so um looking at the time i'll maybe just ask uh, i'll start with the problem i'm going to do the problem statement opportunity goal and risk and um i think maybe I'll just ask you to all to read those four he headings and what's underneath them. And then to go ahead and add some like comments. And then, uh, then after about five minutes, I'm going to ask people to uh, like verbalize their comments. Does that sound like a good way to go about it instead of it just being discussion? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So five minutes, read the problem statement, opportunity, goal, and risks add your comments and suggestions. And then um, after five minutes, I'll stop and then I'll ask you to verbalize what, what you've written or not written and go. Cool.
So one minute, but I can also give you more. I've done my first pass. I'm good. That's how I'm coming up. Oh, interesting. You need some more time, Daniel and Georg? I'm good. I was already going through the objective, so. Okay, cool. You're not allowed to go there yet. Hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, what were we supposed to be doing? I only did the objectives. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> um, well, I was suggesting that, that you all read the problem statement, opportunity, goals, and risks first. Okay. Just, and, but if you, so, and then, we're, then the objectives just are coming from those, so. Okay. But if you did both, that's fine. Okay. I was just trying not to take up too much time was the reason I was trying to like. No, no okay, worries. so does anyone, like not the objectives, but before that in the risk goals, opportunity or problem statement, does anyone have any thing they'd like to verbalize that they've written here? Otherwise I'll go through it later. I think, um, the, the problem I have with this is not a problem with this, uh, this bit at all. It's that I think that the goals for the chaos project are not particularly clear. So yeah. it's hard. It's going to be hard for us to fit, make sure that this work fits in with the goals of the project. I mean, getting at some of your risks down there. Yeah. Um, but I do think we should, we, we've kind of mentioned it a few times and never actually quite teed it up for a discussion in the, like the formal chaos meeting. But I think we should have a little more um oh something about the the overall goals of the project and make sure that those are clearly stated because i don't feel like they are i feel like i'll, I'll chime in on that yes please right. yeah so i mean and that this is a, it's a totally fair point and it's something we can bring up for the board meeting and i think it's definitely worth bringing up but you know i think um when the charter was put together gosh a while ago <laughs> that maybe we didn't quite know what the goals were. We kind of knew this vaguer sense of community health and maybe we want to kind of take a look at this and move it forward. Yep. Um, and then the work groups kind of formed um, within the chaos project. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's a bit of a horse before the cart kind of thing. Um, I think if they were vague to begin, perhaps to capture quite a bit. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it's I mean, a it's... Honestly, it's perfectly natural that we'd be in this state given when the project was formed and how the working groups formed and kind of everything you just said. So it's not, it's not a criticism of the project at all. Yeah. It's just that we're now at a state where we have multiple working groups that are really active and we probably should clarify the goals of the overall project just to make sure that everyone is yep. working in the same direction. Yep. Yeah. Point well taken. Well, and ideally, like, you know, we would, I, ideally the chaos project would have its, and this is an ideal world map. So, so you, you, <laughs> you would like that the goals for 2019 would be presented, or at least like a draft of those goals for 2019 would be presented. And then as we are building ours, we would try to align with those to some extent and then our own. So, um, and I guess my only worry with that not being here and why I'm like, like I think one of my objectives is like the, the chaos working group webpage has been updated to, is that this working group gets really far and then someone says, you know, this is totally not, you know, this is not chaos. This is something different. You know, like that's just my, my worry and why, like I, I brought up um, wanting to know that more, but. Yeah. So, I mean, would it, would it be terrible if it was more bottom up driven that it was the goals from the working group that kind of drove chaos as a, as a whole, as opposed to, because the way you were talking, it was seemed more top down. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'd, maybe that's a question for the board of directors because I know there's, it feels like there's some pretty set ideas amongst some of the people in the group or like. Yeah, 
maybe yeah. people are people. Some people might have different ideas, but yeah. Well, um, uh, I mean, I'll give you a real. Ex uh, this is being recorded, right? Um, it is. <laughs> I can pause the recording. The individual on the board that is like you know not felt aligned around DNI. So you know, mm -hmm. if somebody's in a, a place of influence that feels like um, it feels like a threat a little bit to the work. So I just. Maybe that doesn't make sense to anyone else, just to me. No, no I, would agree. I, I would agree with that, actually. Um, yeah. But getting back to your, your point about um, whether it should be bottoms up or tops down, um, I, I think it's fine for it to be bottoms up driven as long as both of the working groups agree to the same set of goals. Yeah, sure. Um, I think there's, there's no problem with it being sort of bottoms up driven as long as, as, long as everyone agrees to it. That's, I just want us all to be marching towards mm -hmm. the same thing and have diversity and inclusion be a more clear part of it, getting at Emma's point. Yeah. Yep. What Don said. I can I can bring this up to the growth, maturity, and decline work group too about the crafting of goals mm -hmm. for 2019, and then also to the board that perhaps the best approach is to really take a look at the goals of the working groups and, <laughs> and say that listen, this is where the work is getting done. Yeah. As a, as a project, we need to to accommodate that work um, and recognize that those are the goals of the, the work groups and represent that uh, through the project more broadly or, or at that larger level. To me, yeah. to me, that makes a ton, ton more sense. Yeah. Yeah. The ideal way is not necessarily the best way. Maybe it is. Maybe I can, maybe <laughs> Wait, what I'm is the ideal words. way? I and mean, what is the best <laughs> way? <laughs> My words are failing me today. <laughs> Um, I'll do that. It's not a problem. It's, it's a very sensible approach to me, irrespective of how people feel about things. Yeah. This is the, we, we, ha we have to, as a project, as the chaos project, recognize the work that's being done. And if we, and if we fail to do that, then we're really not a project <laughs> that is recognizing <laughs> the work that's being done just in that project. So it doesn't make any sense to me. So. No, thanks for your su support in, on that, Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to articulate anything? I, I want to leave. If, like, I'll maybe go for five more minutes, and then we can pick it up again next week. So I don't want to. I know there's probably other things. Emma of um, and team. Um, I need to. Uh, I need to walk back into school, but I wanted to. Um, to uh, note here, I figured out that some of the comments I was making. Um, it's because. Um, <laughs> got labeled under open source voices and um, that's me so, just so you all know um uh, and it's only because my account is linked to a, a blog and podcast series and i so apparently i was signed in but not to the right account anyway no I, worries I've noted, yeah i've noted where that happened i've noted my name next to it okay cool thanks guys thank you it's nice thank to you call. thank you bye okay all right bye bye i Any second other? and support everything that's been said i don't have much to add there cool Danielle? Well, I, I, I just added a couple of small comments, so. Okay, um, I'll, read, I'll read through those. Is there anything yeah. you want to Just the, the first of them that uh, I was not sure if there was a real risk about the Chaos Board not recognizing the work we are doing, but it seems that the feeling of, of us is basically that this might be a risk, so that was mm -hmm. one of the comments there. So I resolved my own comment. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and the other one was about using the, the word silos that I really like in the problem statement. So I'm, I'm kind of okay. re reinforcing this in terms of, uh, uh, the, the, so the problem here is how to be transparent in the sense that, hey, we, we do have all of this, but at the same time, not to harm people. So basically I'm saying again the same. Um, so I basically agree with all of you, but just to, to stress my two, my two comments. Thank you. So one of the 
observations I have is that the problem statements, especially focused on work done in communities and to see if they are being effective. And with the chaos project as a whole, I sometimes get the sense it's also a lot about um, taking a look at a project as an outsider and understanding the health as someone who's not part of a project. And so my question is, is there a component that we want to incorporate for someone who is not already part of a project to better understand the diversity and inclusion of a project? Gotcha. So what you're saying is like the problem statement very much speaks to a type of use case, which I can see clearly now you've pointed it out, <laughs> um, versus like not what it would be. Yeah. Okay. Did you write that somewhere? Because that's a really good point. I can add it. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's like if it's going to be actually adding in that scenario or that we somehow strip the use from the problem statement. I can maybe think about how to rewrite it. Yeah, I think yeah, the bit that he's highlighted, successive interven interventions, I yeah. think is probably the, the problematic bit. But like you, I really hadn't thought about it that way until Gary pointed it out. Just because yeah, that's, that, that's usually the use case that I'm on the side of, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, it would be, um, I mean, the tool would be super useful for people, like a checklist, like we'll do for the 24 contributions, like how can you evaluate whether this is a project you want to get involved with before you have to experience mm -hmm. like a negative something. Yeah. Cool. And Thanks. One thing the growth maturity and decline work group is working on is building out use cases for their metrics. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that is something we want to add as an objective as well to highlight how different metrics are useful in different use cases. That's another good point. I'm just going to put, this is objective zero, um, something, something about use cases, because I, I have down here, there's something about like, we've, we've worked with 10 open source projects, we've applied those metrics, but um, yeah, that's a good point. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll include that. Because right now, you know, I mean, the stories help, but if people don't understand how to use it out of the gate, like there's those use cases. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna stop this here. So please do like add in your comments. You can also ping me if something feels really off. So I, I wanna make sure that it represents everyone's opinions and thoughts. And that's just the per perfection that you, that some of these comments bring insights, right? It's not just one, one person. Go our working group. <laughs> That's really awesome. Thank you for spearheading this, Emma. My pleasure. Yeah, agreed. Thank you. So next on our agenda would be the going through the issues, especially the ones that are ready for review and hopefully moving them, them over into pull requests so that we can get some of the work done and completed and move on. Uh, Daniel, you had created uh, the metrics behind 77, 78, and 81. So in the agenda, I left the links. Do you all think it would be useful to go through them right now, discuss them, or do that asynchronously and then create pull requests from those. What's our process mm. that we want to do? Yeah, let's say in between those, so you said, yeah, all, all of the governance related uh, things. So basically this is a matter of request right i mean we've been going through some iterations and some of the comments like the board council diversity were editors so i guess we just need to send a pull request right if there are some changes do you have any other idea or any other suggestion uh, georg 
I I just wanted to know is there specific feedback you want before you would go and create pull requests or do you want someone else to create pull requests? Um, like I can send the pull request, yeah. The only thing to keep in mind, I think we changed the template just a little bit. So you might want to refer to the templates uh, in, the, in the templates directory. I think we removed the author's uh, field and we changed the way that we described the question, I think, or something. We added a disclaimer at the top as well. Yeah. Okay, so then I will, uh, okay, for, for them, for these three issues, I will, I will check the three Google Docs. I will up, update the uh, template. Releasing and then I, I will send the pull request. Okay, awesome. And if you need anything, just shoot us an email. Happy to review it. I'll review the pull request anyway. <laughs> yeah, if I'm, well, if I'm the one sending the pull request, probably someone else has to review that. So thank that is, you. That is true. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So taking note of this. Awesome. I'll drop a link to the template that we're using in that uh, issue, just so you have it. Then the other issues, so I created issues for all of the missing metrics. Would it make sense to, for each of us to choose one and work on it over the next week? And, or, that, that's my proposal. We each pick one and start working on it. The, the same way we were uh, working for the for the tutorial, like trying to fill a couple of main areas, I think was quite successful in terms of producing something at least that really uh, alpha version of it. But having something like this would be great because at least we have something to to show to the world, at least to start some discussions. Okay, I assign myself to contribution type and commit to finishing a draft until next week. Anyone else wants to commit? Yeah, I'll pick one. I was just dropping comments in about with the, with the template. And if I have I have time apart for the three pull requests and updating the template, I will I will choose one one of the issues. I don't promise anything. <laughs> okay. So and then I'll unless there are any other questions or concerns, I would move on to the last item on our agenda. Mm -hmm. Since that is not the case, we have an open pull request based on our conversation last week to add Don and I as maintainers to the repository. We already have commit rights. It's just a matter of adding it to the um, readme. Oh, do you really have the right to commit? I, I don't think we're, I mean, it's adding us to the readme and setting us up as maintainers in, in GitHub because I, I think that comes with additional privileges that we don't have or that okay. I don't have. I think I can, I can add it to the, um, to the team that, can, that can, has the, can have the specific uh, rights to accept requests and so on. So. Or maybe I do and I just never noticed. And I see your comment that I butchered your link. Yeah, it says a uh, geeky girl, but without the dawn part at the end, which is. Oops, I'll fix it <laughs> real quick. That is the most common mistype of any of my um, 
online handles. I thought I had checked it, but <laughs> apparently not. Well, I know. Thanks. So was there a discussion today about Emma's email from whatever Friday or with the 24 contributions? All right. I think that's a huge deal. <laughs> oh, cool. So I, I mean, from my perspective, it starts putting this work into practice, which is, a, I think, a, it appears to be one of the hard parts of the chaos project. Um, it appears to be a hard part for any of these types of projects that are trying to specify the ways we understand data. So, for example, the SPDX project, I think this was a challenge for them. It was easy to talk about how they understood licensing and copyright, but to have other groups put those efforts into practice, that's a whole nother request. So I think that the 24 contribution stuff is a huge potential win to actually see some of this work from the DNI work group being captured by another project. Um, I'm actually having a discussion with some folks from Red Hat later in the week, and I would love to propose something like this um, for their groups as well, for the communities that they work with. But I, I'm not quite sure where I would point them or what, Emma, you had suggested like maybe five fairly simple things to capture. Maybe you didn't say five, but. Yeah. Uh, so the, where it's at right now is that, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure of your question, so maybe I'll just say, sure. um, I met with Andrew Nesbitt, who is a fantastic human, if you ever get the chance, uh, to, just to ask him about adding some DNI like, checklists as part of the thing you can do for an open source project. And he yep. was like, hey, good news, like I'm changing the whole name of it this um, year because I went to the sustainability conference or something. I forget which one it was, but I, we should go to that. It sounds like it's like where people inspire each other to do better with tech, like the kind of conference. And, you know, he wanted to cap, find a way to capture non-technical contributions. So I asked him to put on, like basically put on the website, this checklist. And he said he would. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that he will put any other checklists out, but what he, he asked that, or I, I haven't seen his, he's the copy of what he's doing yet. So I actually don't, I don't know how he's even envisioning that checklist where it's going to go. I know what I'm envisioning. Maybe it'll line up. Okay. Uh, but then the thing that they're doing that might align Nomad is that, that like the way that they're asking people to con to contribute is like there's a text box. You know, basically like write something like Georg um, had mentioned. I sat on a panel, like a diversity inclusion panel as a contribution. And then it like you'll hit submit and then he's got some funky thing where it ends up being a contribution in GitHub so that people start to see contributions. And he says, like, I know people could could game and he's like, then they're just like hurting themselves. Like, I don't actually get, you know, but um, so you and one of the things he asked me for is that, you know, what, what he needs is some solid examples of good first contributions. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me if I'd reach out to Mozilla and I listed the community managers know that, but maybe that's the thing that Red Hat could do is like, get in on December 1st and can, you know, submit some really good examples of contribution and then like ping Andrew or I can ping him and say, Hey, there's, there should be a few registered now from Red Hat and Mozilla if you're looking for examples of non-technical contribution. But would but, it be a way for the communities to say that are at Red Hat um, for them to capture their own? Yeah, that, that's type, the type of engagement. That's the way I was thinking. Yeah. That's totally what, sorry, that sounded different. Yeah. That, we're encouraging it's like hey sumo who's our support people who like help people on twitter um mm -hmm. re record your contributions in this this thing and the, you know it, it, they might get highlighted as part of like good contributions not and as so, doing it so out of the work from the dni from the work group here are there perhaps a couple different contributions from those focus areas that you might want to put forward because i think if you put forward i think this was your point if you put forward all six focus areas and say here capture all these things in a github repository they're going to be like yeah no yeah no what i was going to do was uh, i have to actually finish writing this text maybe i'll send it all to you all mm -hmm. uh, afterwards i was the check i was going to propose like five things because we just talked about it being short because i yeah. showed him the checklist that i have that's longer and it's just mm -hmm. like you know does the code of conduct have a way to report like as a as an inclusivity bug contribution and those can come from each of the 
focus areas. Like maybe there's one for events, one for governance, one for communication. I can, maybe I'll just share a document with you all, uh, but I do have to try and get in by today, I think, the end of today, so. Even if, yeah, just anything that would like start the conversation totally. would be super helpful. I think the focus area, like emphasizing that there are focus areas might, is probably important. I never thought of that. So thank you. I'll try and do that. Thank you. Okay. That'd be, that'd be really great. And if you want to share that, I can kind of chime in on that as well. Sure. Sure. That sounds good. And um, yeah, hopefully it does raise the profile of this work. I'm hoping so too. I would just, I love the idea of being able to capture things like participating in events. Yeah. I, I just love that. I, and, and doing it, like you said, is a green square in a, I think one of the things that that raises is we're, we're going to have to think about how we capture this work in relation to the current workflow of many open source projects. Yeah. Like we're, we're not going to change that workflow and GitHub is just a structure that yep. defines a lot of the workflow yeah. of how communities work. And so we, we have to accommodate that. Um, yeah. I'm happy to talk with you more about that. And, and he is like, he's very clever what he's trying to set up. So, you know, maybe, he'll be starting something as well that we can build on. Okay, that'd be cool. I have to go, I'm sorry, um, but I'll share that document with you all later. Please. Thanks. Have a good week. Awesome, thank you. Thanks. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye.